جی اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم الحمدللہ الحمدللہ نحمده و نستعینه و نستغفره و نؤمن به و نتوکل علیه و نعوذ باللہ من شرور انفسنا و من سیعات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له و من يضلل فلا هادی له و نشهد و لا الہ الا اللہ وحده لا شریک له ونشهد أن سيدنا ومولانا محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله تبارك وتعالى عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه وبارك وسلم تسليما كثيرا كثيرا أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا كتب عليكم الصيام كما كتب على الذين من قبلكم لعلكم تتقون وقال تعالى ولمن خاف مقام ربه جنة فبيي آلاء ربكما تكذبان وقال تعالى وأما من خاف مقام ربه ونهى النفس عن الهوى فإن الجنة هي المأوى وقال تعالى من خشی الرحمن بالغیب و جاء بقلب منیب ادخلوها بسلام ذالک یوم الخلود صدق اللہ مولانا العظیم و صدق رسوله النبی الامی الكریم و نحن على ما قال ربنا و خالقنا و رازقنا من الشاہدین و الشاکرین و الحمد للہ رب العالمین ان اللہ و ملائکته یصلون على النبی یا ایوہ الذین آمنوا صلو علیہ وسلموا تسلیما ریسپیکٹڈ ایلڈرز برادرز فرینڈز لیڈیز محترم خواتین ٹوڈیز ٹاک از ادریسٹ ایٹ لیڈیز دا جنس آر توفیلی ان ٹوڈیز ٹاک توفیلی از سمون ہو کمز فور ا داوت ویڈاوت انویڈیشن Some people keep a check out where there is Walima. And when they find out there is Walima at such and such a place, they just go without Dawat. Someone used to take passengers from here to London. So where he's stopping at Leicester or along the way, so he would inquire beforehand where there is wedding today in Leicester. And he would drop the passengers at their place for a moment, go to that wedding and, he, and eat properly to his fill. And then take the passengers from there forward. So, this is someone who is called a Tufaili. And the word is from someone whose name was Tufail in Basra. And he used to go around. And uh, if someone told him, Why, have you been invited to the camp? <laughs> and he would shut them down. So nobody would be able to say anything to them. So, I am sorry gents, but today you are Tufailis. Today's talk is addressed at the ladies. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has revealed Surah Al-Nisa in the Quran, especially for ladies. So, today we're going to address ladies. And the subject I want to talk about today is fear of Allah. Today, we need to bring some khawf and fear of Allah in our hearts and mind. Normally, we have become you know, fearless, no fear, no fear at all. Now having no fear is no good. We need to have fear. Because the fear of Allah is the thing which keeps us steadfast, keeps us strong. If we lose fear, we start misbehaving. We start doing the wrong stuff. So what we need to do is have hope of Allah in our hearts and minds. To keep us on track. And when we see the ladies of the past, they used to fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They used to be, you know, very, very fearful. They used to be scared. If they did something wrong, you know, they would be very, very agitated until they repent, they do tawbah, and you know, whatever. Major sin, minor sin. We hear in hadith, the story of Ma'iz al-Aslami, who committed zina. But then he was restless. He came to the Prophet 
and said, Ya Rasulullah, I've done something really bad. Please carry out the punishment upon me. And Rasulullah rejected him, turned him away. He came for a second time, third time, fourth time. And then Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam checked him out and carried out the punishment on him. Few days later, a woman from Ghamid called Al Ghamidiyah came and she also confessed that Ya Rasulullah, I have done something really bad. Carry out the punishment. And Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, go away from here. Might have done some mistake or something. She said, no Ya Rasulullah, I am pregnant with zina. I have done zina and I have become pregnant. So Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, okay. Uh, he told someone from the Ansar to look after her. So she stayed in her in their house and uh, he looked after her until she gave birth to the baby and uh, she came that Ya Rasulullah have given birth to the baby now carry out the punishment upon me and Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi said no we can't do that your baby is small the baby needs you you have to feed the baby bring her up then what, what will happen will happen so she took the baby away she looked after the baby and the baby was brought up and after some time she came with the baby with a piece of bread in the baby's hand and saying Ya Rasulullah now the baby started to eat and drink uh, himself and uh, is independent of me so Prophet Sallallahu called one of the Ansar and said take care of the baby and then he carried out the Had upon her and the Had was stoning to death because she was married and look at that, how yani, guilty she felt how fearful she was she knew that the punishment of dunya is much much more lighter than the punishment of the hereafter so it is better if i am if the punishment is carried out here rather than in the hereafter that that was all because of the fear and this was also barakat of the sahabat of nabi kareem sallallahu alaihi wasallam the sahaba were such if they made a slight mistake you know they would just the mistake would happen if, if we are human beings shaitan works on us our nafs is with us and the shaitan you know puts us to sin so we do make mistakes we do sin but we should not be stubborn on that sin as soon as we realize we should immediately repent what's happening today is we sin and many times we boast about our sins on snapchat on instagram on facebook on twitter showing photos of our sins now this is this is not good this is really 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 bad our prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam has said in one hadith that kullu ummati mu'afan illa al-mujahirun my whole ummah will remain with afiyat peace safety security except for those who sin openly illa al-mujahirun wa inna min al-majanati an ya'mala ar-rajul al-'amal fa yusbihu yakshifu sitr Allah wa qad bata yasturuhu rabbuhu it is from shamelessness that a person gets up in the morning and he exposes his sins to the public whereas he spent the night in a manner that Allah was concealing his sin so Allah was doing his sattari but the person deliberately exposed the sins in front of people last night i did this and this and that so this type of behavior of you know being fearless having no fear at all no shame at all you know this is not a mu'min's behavior a mu'min should always be fearful you know in one riwayat it says that even after people have gone in Jahannam, Nawuz Billah, may Allah protect us from the azab of Jahannam. A time will come when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say, أَخْرِجُوا مِنَ النَّارِ مَنْ ذَكَرَنِي فِي يَوْمٍ أَوْ خَافَنِي فِي مَقَامٍ Bring out from the Jahannam that person who remembered me one day or who feared me one day. So if you had fear even just for one day, then for that fear, Allah will take you out of Jahannam, take you into Jannah. So fear is amazing, it's ajeeb. Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that if a person is fearful of Allah and 
tears come out of his eyes due to the fear of Allah and those tears are small as the head of a fly then even those tears will wash away all his sins so the water of the seven oceans cannot wash your heart but two drops of tears can wash your heart cleanse your heart so crying out of fear of Allah prophet sallallahu alaihi said aynani la tamassuhum an-nar fire will not burn two eyes aynun bakat min khashyatillah wa aynun batat tahrusu fi sabilillah an eye which cried out of the fear of Allah and an eye which remained awake at night looking after uh, the uh, armies in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so the the tears of fear are extremely precious and we need to cry out of fear prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said ayyuhan nas ibku fa in lam tabku fa tabaku people cry if you can't cry then pretend to be crying make the face of someone who's crying so crying and fear of allah is amazing and we need to cry over our sins as mentioned in the hadith wabki ala khati'ati think over your sins and cry over them this is what will bring you salvation now uh, you know i'm not pointing fingers at anyone i'm saying to myself that i sin a lot but i don't fear allah i never cry may allah give me tawfiq to cry out of fear of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we need to learn from the previous ladies of the past how they used to cry let's take ummu almu'minin aisha as-siddiqah bint as-siddiq habibatu habibillah al-mubarra'atu min 'indillah she is Siddiqa and the daughter of Siddiq and she is the beloved of the beloved of Allah she is the one for whom Allah spoke in the Quran and Allah declared her innocence now this lady such pious lady to whom Jibril alayhi salam gave salams and for whom prophet sallallahu alayhi salam said you are my wife in this dunya and you are my wife in the hereafter meaning she is a jannati and in spite of all these basharats ummul mu'minin aisha radhiyallahu anha used to cry a lot when she made a slight mistake that was taking a custom of not speaking to abdullah ibn zubair her nephew he did something which annoyed her and she said did he say this well I'm not, I'm, uh, I take, make it haram upon me to speak to her forever during my life. Now, Abdullah ibn Zubair regretted it. He asked for mafi and she refused. Somehow, he got to Ummul Mumineen's chamber and because she was his khala, so he went with a few friends. They were given permission. They went inside and the friends sat outside and he went behind the curtain and he fell at the feet of his khala and said please khala please please amma please forgive me please forgive me and the sahaba behind the curtain also did sifarish that ummul mu'minin forgive him he is regretful remorseful he is uh, you know uh, apologizing ummul mu'minin uh, finally talked to him forgave him and then because she broke her qassam you know she gave kafara of that and kafara of qasam is to free one slave or feed 10 miskins or keep 3 days roza now she did not free just one slave two slave 10 slaves she freed 40 slaves for the kafara of the qasam she broke and she still kept on crying that why did i take such a qasam and then i had to break it i used allah's name and then I broke that custom. Oh Allah, forgive me. Oh Allah, forgive me. Oh Allah, forgive me. Ummul Mu'minin Aisha radiallahu anha was so fearful and fulfilled with khawf of Allah that her nephew Urwa ibn Zubair, the son of Asma, her sister, says that one morning 
It was a regular morning, normal day. It wasn't even Ramzan or anything. I came to see my khala. And uh, she had started her chash namaz. Salatul duha. So I waited there. Perhaps she might finish. And then I could meet her. And she was reading Quran. She was reading Surat wa Tur. Wa kitabim masloor. Fi raqqim manshoor. Wal bayt al ma'moor. Wa saqf al marfoor. Wal bahr al masjoor. Inna adhaab rabbika lawaqi'a. Ma lahu min dhafi'a. يَوْمَ تَمُونُ السَّمَاءُ مَوْرًا وَتَسِيرُ الْجِبَالُ سَيْرًا فَوَيْنُ يَوْمَيْذٍ لِلْمُكَذِّبِينَ She kept on reading, reading, reading a bit loudly because she was alone in the house and you can't read with voice if there is no namahalam there. So she came upon the verse فَأَقْبَلَ بَعْضُهُمْ عَلَى بَعْضٍ يَتَسَاءَلُونَ قَالُوا إِنَّا كُنَّا قَبْلُ فِي أَهْلِنَا مُشْفِقِينَ فَمَنَّ اللَّهُ عَلَيْنَا وَوَقَانَا عَذَابَ السَّمُونَ إِنَّا كُنَّا مِنْ قَبْلُ نَدْعُوهُ إِنَّهُ هُوَ الْبَرُّ الرَّحِيمُ The Jannatis began to converse with one another and they said Indeed in our homes during our lives, we were extremely fearful of Allah. We were always scared of the punishment of Allah. Mushfiqoon. And because of that ishfaq and khawf and fear, Allah was extremely kind and favorable to us. And He saved us from the adab of the scorching wind of Jahannam. And indeed, we used to make du'as and call upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala beforehand while we were in the dunya. And indeed, Allah is al barrul rahim extremely dutiful and extremely merciful. Allah fulfills His duty and Allah shows His mercy. So the Jannatis were talking about their worldly life and how they used to fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Hazrat Aisha radiallahu anha came upon this verse and she burst into tears, sobbing like a baby and she was crying and crying and crying. She just repeated these verses and she kept on crying. So Urwa ibn Zubair says, I couldn't stand there any longer. I went to the markets and I bought my stuff which I needed to. I came back and she was still there standing in Jash Namaz and repeating the same verses and crying like I had left her. This is khawf and fear. Hazrat Aisha radiallahu anha, so fearful in spite of being given the basharat of Jannat, in spite of being the beloved wife of Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is khawf and fear of Allah which we need to bring in us. You know the opposite of khawf is fear is happiness, joy, rejoicing, which we are doing today. We're always happy, chilling out, going out. You know, at the moment it's lockdown, but still people in ordering lots of food from takeaways and lots of, you know, desserts and chocolates and cakes and whatever. We are always merry making. Now, this is not the habit of Ahlul Iman, Ahlul Khawf. This is the habit of others. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in Surah Al Inshiqaq فَأَمَّا مَنْ أُوْتِيَ كِتَابَهُ بِيَمِينِهِ فَسَوْفَ يُحَاسَبُ حِسَابًا يَسِيرًا وَيَنْقَلِبُ إِلَىٰ أَهْلِهِ مَسْرُورًا وَأَمَّا مَنْ أُوْتِيَ كِتَابَهُ وَرَاءَ ظَهْرِهِ فَسَوْفَ يَدْعُو ثُبُورًا وَيَصْلَى سَعِيرًا إنه كان في أهله مسرورا إنه ظن أن لن يحور بلا إن ربه كان به بصيرا الله سيد عن ذلك يوم القيامة There will be some who will be given their amal nama book of deeds in the right hands and they uh, will be rejoicing they will be really happy فينقلبوا إلى أهله مسرورا he will go to his family members, to his jannat, to his place, happy, showing them their certificate 
I have passed. This is my certificate. This is my certificate. إِنَّهُ كَا فَيَنْقَلِبُ إِلَىٰ لِي مَسْرُورًا أَنْ وَأَمَّا مَنْ أُوْتِيَ كِتَابَهُ وَرَاءَ ظَهْرِهِ That person who is given his a'mal naman certificate in his left hand behind his back وَرَاءَ ظَهْرِهِ فَسَوْفَ يَدْعُوا سُبُورًا will call upon death Oh death come here take me here I want to die I don't want to go in the punishment of Jahannam وَيَدْعُوا سُبُورًا إِنَّهُ And then Allah said فَسَوْفَ يَدْعُوا سُبُورًا وَيَصْلَى سَعِيرًا And he will burn in the blazing fire. And what is the reason for that? Look at the ponder over the next verse. إِنَّهُ كَانَ فِي أَهْلِهِ مَسْرُورًا Indeed, he used to be masroor, happy, joyous, chilling out in his family, in the dunya. All the time, chilling out, chilling out, happy, happy, happy. Masroora. إِنَّهُ ظَنَّ أَلَّنْ يَحُورٌ He thought that he's never going to return to his Rabb. بَلَا إِنَّ رَبَّهُ كَانَ بِهِ بَصِيرًا Why not? His Rabb was ever watchful of him. Rabb was, is watching with him. Allah is not asleep. Allah is not unaware of what we do. He is fully aware. He is watching everything. He is looking at everything. Every move. He is watching us. Every move. He is hearing every word we utter. He is looking at every text we make. He is looking at every Snapchat photo we send. He is looking at every Instagram we send. He is looking at our Facebook accounts. He is looking at our Twitter. He is looking at our whole life. He is watching us when we sit down in front of that TV and watch the movies. And Pete, you know, it's very sad, sad state of affairs. We are in this lockdown. We have to be more scared of Allah. We are in Ramadan and we hear of some people, may Allah guide them, that behind, outside lockdown, they used to watch one movie a day, but inside lockdown, they're watching three, four movies a day. They're spending all the time at home with the TV on all day and watching movies. That should not be the case. We should be scared of Allah. Allah could punish us with more. Allah protect us from His punishment. Allah guide us. Allah give us some understanding. So, this is why we need to bring some fear of Allah in our hearts. Without fear, we can't st- uh, you know, stay straight and upon the straight path. We need fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Look at the previous ladies. We have the example of Hazrat Umm Darda radiallahu anha. She is the wife of Sayyiduna Abu Darda radiallahu anhu. Now there are two Umm Dardas. Kubra and Sora. The name of the elder Umm Darda is Khairah bint Abi Hadrat. She is a Sahabiya, and she narrates as well from Nabi Kareem sallallahu alaihi wasallam. She died before Abu Darda radiyallahu anha. And there is the younger Umm Darda, and her name is Hujayma bint Hay al Wasabiya, and she is. The second wife of uh, the Sahabi, great Sahabi, Abu Darda radiallahu anhu. When Abu Darda died, she was still young. So Muawiyah ibn Abi Sufyan proposed to her, but she refused. She said that my husband Abu Darda radiallahu anhu had told me that I have heard a hadith from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, al-mar'atu li akhiri azwajiha. A wife will be with her last husband. And I want to be with, Umud, with my husband Abu Darda in Jannah, so I'm not going to marry now. She remained alone, single for the rest of her life. Now, this hadith, maybe Abu Darda radiallahu anhu heard this, but there are other riwayat which say that a woman will be given choice. If she had multiple husbands, then in Jannah, she will be given choice for whom, with whom she wants to stay. And of course, she will choose the one who has the highest rank in Jannah. Why should you go with the lower one? And the third opinion narrated by Imam Qurtubi in uh, At-Tazkirah is that she will stay with the one who had the best conduct towards her, who had the best akhlaq of all of them. She will choose that one who had the best akhlaq and she will stay with that uh, husband in the in Jannah. 
So whatever the case, Abu Darda radiallahu anhu had heard this. So he said to his wife, and she stuck to it. She she said, I'm not going to get married because I want to stay with my husband Abu Darda in Jannah. Now, she spent the rest of her life worshipping Allah. Maimun ibn Mahran says, مَا دَخَلْتُ عَلَىٰ أُمِّ الدَّرْدَىٰ فِي سَاعَةٍ صَلَاةٍ إِلَّا وَجَدْتُهَا مُسَلِّيَةً Whenever I went to see her and it was salah time, she was already praying. She was already busy in her salah. Ibrahim ibn Abi Abla says, I said to Umm al-Darda that please make dua for me. And she replied, أَوَ بَلَغْتُ أَنَا ذَلِكَ have I reached that status that people ask me to make dua for them? I am not of that status. I am a very lowly person. Who am I to make dua? Go make dua yourself. I mean, she thought she was so humble. She thought so low of herself. Yunus ibn Maysarah says, كُنَّا نَحْذُرُ أُمَّ الدَّرْدَى وَتَحْذُرُهَا نِسَاءٌ مُتَعَبِّدَاتٌ يَقُمْنَ اللَّيْلَ كُلَّهُ حَتَّى أَنَّ أَقْدَامَهُنَّ قَدْ انْتَفَخَتْ مِنْ طُولِ الْقِيَامِ Yunus ibn Maysarah says, we used to go to Umm Darda radiallahu anha and ladies from the neighborhood who were extremely devoted and worshippers would be worshipping with her and they would stand all night in front of Allah to the extent that their feet would swell due to the length of their standing. Now this is, uh, you know, uh, we are going through Ramadan. So maybe uh, ladies of the household would get together and worship in one room, not with jamaat. They used to pray their own namaz. It's not they, she, Yunus is not talking about jamaat. They used to pray their own tahajjud, their own qiyamul layl. But when you are in one place together, then you get a little bit of encouragement. When you see someone praying namaz, you get the encouragement to pray as well. This is why. In this lockdown at home, the husbands should pray a lot so that the children and the family get encouragement as well. And they also get the urge to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So on the other hand, ladies should worship so the husband can get some encouragement. Because many times it's vice, <coughs> vice versa. That ladies are more devoted and they are more fearful of Allah. And they bring their husbands on the right track. And the husbands also start worshipping and praying their namaz properly. So over here, the ladies used to stand all night so long standing that their feet would swell. What is this swelling of the feet? Sunnah of the Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Do we not hear in the hadith? That Ya Rasulullah, why do you worship Allah so much that your, your um, feet swell? And he replied, Afala akunu abdan shakura. Should I not be a shukr guzar banda? Hazrat Shaykhul Hind rahmatullahi alayhi. In Ramadan, he would have multiple huffaz continuing with tilawat at night. And he would be standing behind them because he himself was not hafiz. So one half is, two half is, three half is, standing all night. And then at suhoor time and after fajr, people would press his feet, do some malish. So they would look at his feet and they would say, Hazrat, your feet are swollen. They are like hati pair, like elephant. Hati pair is called in Urdu, when they swell. So Hazrat would smile and he would say, Alhamdulillah, ek sunnat ada hui. That Alhamdulillah, I have been able to follow in one sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that his foot feet would swell, my feet are swollen as well. He would give, feel happy by the swelling of the feet. So these ladies would stand for hours until their feet would swell. Umm Dada radiallahu anha, it is said that one of her daughters passed away. So Yunus ibn Maysara says, we buried her and uh, informed Umm Darda radiallahu anha. She said to the daughter, Idhabi ila rabbiki wa azhabu ila rabbi thumma dakhalat al masjid. My daughter, you go to your Rabb and I will go to my Rabb. And then she entered the masjid and started her ibadat. Upon the death of her own daughter, 
Shahr ibn Hushab says that Ummu Darda radiyallahu anha used to say إِنَّمَا الْوَجَلْ فِي قَلْبِ ibn Adam كَحْتِرَاقِ السَّفْعَةِ أَمَا تَجِدُ لَهَا قَشْعَدِيرَةً قَالَ بَلَا قَالَتْ فَدْعُ اللَّهَ إِذَا وَجَدْتَ ذَلِكَ فَإِنَّ الدُّعَاءَ يُسْتَجَابُ عِنْدَ ذَلِكَ That fear of Allah in the heart of the son of Adam is like the um, erupting into the fire of um, dry, uh, dry grass or dry uh, safa means um, palm trees dry. Who came on Sabine? Bark. So if you if you put light on there, it will burst into flames. So he said, Khauf and Wajal in the heart of Ibn Adam is like that of erupting into fire of the barn or dry piece of wood. So he said, do you not see that sometimes you certainly shake and your hair stand on the strand? So he said, yeah, sometimes this happens. He said, that is the moment of acceptance. Make dua at that time when you get that type of khawf and fear and you are scared of Allah. That is when dua will be accepted. Make dua. In fact, some mashayikh say, that a sign of acceptance of dua is that you're making dua and suddenly you start shaking and your head stands on the strand and you get so emotional. That is a sign that your dua is accepted. Ask Allah at that time, Allah will give you what you want. Because your mind is there, your heart is there, you're focused, your attention is connected to Allah. This is what is needed. Just, you know, in a parrot fashion, just repeating words while your mind is daydreaming here and there. That's not the way to do dua. The way to do dua is when your heart and mind is focused on that dua. And you have that khawf and fear of Allah in your heart. You are scared that your dua might be rejected and thrown on your face. And you are hopeful that it will be accepted by Allah. But you start crying, you shed a few tears. And in that state, you start shaking. This is the moment of acceptance. So this is what Umm Darda radiallahu anha is saying. Someone said to Umm Darda radiallahu anha that, um, in the majlis of Abdul Malik bin Marwan a, a person uh, backbited you and said some bad things about you so she replied if we are criticized for something which we don't have then we have been praised often for that which we don't have either so we have to create a balance. So if someone blames us for something which we haven't done, then people have praised us as well. So we'll say, no problem. He did. His amal is with him. My amal with me. I'm not going to, uh, you know, wail or cry or scream about it or do anything about it. She used to say, Umm Dada radiallahu anha, Ta'allamu al-hikmata sigharan, ta'amalu biha kibaran, wa inna she would say, learn hikmat and wisdom when you are young and you will be able to practice on it when you grow up and you are old. Because a farmer only harvests what he had sowed from khair or shar, good or bad. So if you had sown good deeds and good seeds in your youth, then that is, you, that is what you will reap uh, in your old age. That is how you will be. So when you're young, try and be practicing. Try and be good. Try and be, you know, on the straight path. And try and do good things. Because that is how you will progress in your life. And towards the end of your life, in your old age, that is how you will be. So this is the nasihat of Umm Darda. And especially in this day and age, with regards to libas, you know, ladies, have some haya and sharam. Don't wear libas even in your households, which is not appropriate. You know, tight blouses, leggings, jeans, and, you know, keeping the hair open, even in front of brothers and, you know, brother-in-laws or even in front of uncles. You know, no good. Even in front of your fathers as well. You have to dress modestly in the, in the presence of mahrams as well. So if you have a habit of this haya and sharam, ismat and iffat, 
and uh, you know uh, modesty from young then that is what what you will reap in your old age as well you will get the benefit of this haya and sharam modesty in your old age as well this is what perhaps she is trying to say aun ibn abdullah says sometimes we used to sit in the majlis of umm darda radhiyallahu anha and we mention allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and do zikr of allah remember allah zikrullah fa nazkurullah indaha but then we would say la'allana am lalnaka perhaps we've been here too long and uh, we've tired you you might be fed up with us so she would say tazumuna annakum qad amlaltumuni you are claiming that you have fed you have made me fed up and you have tired me she would say faqad talabtu al-ibadata fi kulli shay'in fama wajadtu shay'an ashfa li sadri wa la ahra an usiba bihi alladhi uridu min majalis al-dhikri allahu akbar she would say i have i have searched for worship in everything but i never found anything more curing for my heart and more uh, likely for me to gain which i need than majalis of zikr gatherings of zikr she would say gatherings of zikr are the best things a person can get if you get gatherings and majalis of zikr you will get your what you want in the majlis of zikr and alhamdulillah we have majlis of zikr over here on a receiver over here on a mixer on facebook you know after zohar salat so participate in the gathering of zikr that ma'rifat of allah which you want in your heart that togetherness that closeness that proximity that qurb and that ma'rifat and nafsis of allah which you want you will only get in majalis of zikr this is what abu umm darda is saying she used to say that allah says wala zikrullah akbar allah zikr is the greatest blessing uh, meaning greatest thing greatest blessing a person can have she said for say fa in sallaita fa huwa min dhikrillah wa in sumta fa huwa min dhikrillah wa kullu khairin ta'maluhu fa huwa min dhikrillah wa kullu shay'in tajtanibuhu fa huwa min dhikrillah wa afdalu dhalika tasbihu allah azza wa jalla when you pray you are remembering allah when you fast you are remembering allah when you do any good you are remembering allah when you stay away and refrain from anything bad you are remembering allah and the best form of remembrance is tasbihullah azza wa jal glorifying allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so these are the ladies who were fearful in this day and age my dear respected ladies we need to bring some fear of allah in our hearts and uh, think about allah fear allah always be mindful of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if we are mindful we are careful and uh, we think about allah we remember allah we invoke allah we worship allah then this is the thing which will benefit us we are into the month of ramazan uh, alhamdulillah 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 many of our relatives friends you know uh, passed away before ramazan but allah spared us for ramadan allah accepted our duas and allah gave us this time this opportunity to worship allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we should seize that opportunity and avoid doing anything bad especially in these moments of rahmat and mercy from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala today uh, you know we have to make duas as much as we can allah is there for the taking may allah give us tawfiq to do dua we'll make short dua before we finish jazakumullah khair al jaza thank you very much for listening wa akhiru da'wana an alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin wa sallallahu wa sallam ala sayyidina muhammad wa ali wa ashabihi ajma'in bi rahmatika ya arhamar rahimin subhanak allahumma wa bihamdik nashhadu an la ilaha illa anta nastaghfiruk wa natubu ilaik allahumma lakal hamdu wa lakash shukr اللهم لا نسي سنا عليك انت كما اثنيت على نفسك اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد النبي الامي وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم تسليما اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى اله سيدنا محمد صلاه تنجينا بها من جميع الاهوال والافات وتغضي لنا بها جميع الحاجات وتطهرنا بها من جميع السيئات وترفعنا بها عندك على الدرجات وتبلغنا بها اقصى الغايات من جميع الخيرات في الحياه وبعد الممات انك على كل شيء قدير اللهم ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا 
عذاب النار ربنا اغفر لنا ذنوبنا واسرافنا في امرنا وثبت اقدامنا وانصرنا على القوم الكافرين يا ارحم الراحمين oh Allah you are the most forgiving most generous most kind oh Allah we beg you for your rahmah we beg you for your mercy oh Allah please have mercy upon us please forgive us we are indeed very sinful we have uh, we have stained our hearts with the stains of our sins with the dirt and the filth of our sins oh Allah we know we are iqrari mujrim we admit our guilt oh Allah we want your forgiveness we want you to forgive us please allow us to turn to you to to remember you and to ask of you to beg from you and accept our humble duas oh Allah forgive us oh Allah give us hope like the sahabiyat is one lahi majmaeen like these ladies who used to worship you and who used to remember you oh Allah give us hope like them a little bit of hope like they had oh Allah that would be even sufficient for us oh Allah and protect us from being fearless make us fearful and always have taqwa the aim of siyam is to gain taqwa and the main part of taqwa is khauf min al jalil fear of Allah oh Allah give us this fear of yours and allow us to stay away and refrain from your disobedience and allow us to remain steadfast on sirat al mustaqim accept our humble duas be pleased with us oh Allah give us all those good things which your beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam asked from you and protect us from all those evils from which he sought your protection Rabbana taqabbal minna inna ka anta sami'u al-adim utub alayna inna ka anta tawab al-rahim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ala sayyidina muhammad wa alayhi wa sahbihi ajma'in birahmatika ya rahman rahim